Cunis T, how are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast and another story in our Battle Rage series. This episode tells the story of Fruach, swineherd of the Tua de Danon, as told by my brother, Aaron Hegarty. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. Thank you very much. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one time donation to the PayPal button on our website. Like, share, comment, above all, enjoy. And for now, Aaron, tell us a story. The hills, the land that bull. White horns, red eyes. They looked at me, and a flash, it all came back. A long, long time ago, it all came back, tumbling through time. There I am in the field with him, but I'm back long ago. Long, long ago, when I was just a man named Fro, I had a job. I was the king's swineherd, no less. Above Darragh, the king of Munster, and it was a very good thing for me to be the swineherd of Munster. With the fattening of the pigs and the rejoicing in the times of feast and festivities. It was he looked to me, the wise man, to fatten the pigs. To make sure he'd boast and show off to many in plenty. How great the feasting hall smelt with what I dealt. Oh, it was a while as I was on my own. Fattening the pigs, doing what was needed for them, mucking and shoveling and keeping an eye in the ones that would go roaming, always with a hard pull when they were to be slaughtered. They knew, every time, they'd always know. Something inside those eyes, the swines, they have minds like ours, I'm sure of it. But then, I had to look. That was his name. Rocked, the swine herd of Ochlachny, the king of Connacht. Oh, and he was a fine man, and we had all of this in common. How to fatten the swine, indeed, and well, we knew it was important. What season to fatten them in, when to breed them best, how to put them down at night, and once we got comparing to notes, well, we wouldn't really stop. It was him who had a great trick to feed them oats and mixtures with it, with bone broth, a lot of mead mixed in the mixture. Oh, then they wouldn't know if they were to be slaughtered or not. No, no. They'd forget all about that. And so you could take them off and slit their throat and they'd know nothing about it. And we enjoyed the time of it back then. No, we didn't need. And we were all so happy, the two of us, when there was great mast in Munster where I'd invite Rock down and we'd fatten our pigs together and compare the no. We'd even trade the odd pig or two. A fine one for a fine pair, you know. When there was a great mast in Connacht, he'd return the favour. I'd tell him the bidding down in Munster, he'd tell me the bidding out west. And that was how it was for a good long time, the two of us, the best of friends. Sure, we had the similarities, we had the same interests, we had the same clout. Sure, it was great to be the king's swine herd. Always the cup raised to you, never a door shut in the face. A favour, always easy asked. Well, not sure where the rumours came from, but someone said between one feast or the other, 
between Ochlachtney and Bov Darug and Munster, well, the feasting was better in Munster, they said, the fine waterfalls, the poetic language of them all, and maybe the prosperity in the better landscape. It dealt to fattening the pigs the better bit, and so I was called the better one of the swineherds. Sure, people saw us off, paired up as we were, comparing the two of us. And then he got it in his head. He got stuck with this idea that I had taken his knowledge, his interest, and put it towards my own serving. He got it stuck in his thick skull that I had done one over on him. And didn't he then start resenting me while well, there was no more sharing the good mast in Connacht with me when it was going well for him? No, no, always a resentful look then from that moment onwards. I forgive that and I let it go, but then, don't you know, he cast a spell on my swine. I know it was him too. They were eating and eating and I feeding them to fatten them up, but they couldn't get fat, not a one bit, not a one bit. They were shrinking and wasting away, and I was trying to look at them, force feed them, feed them everything I could do. And no matter what I did, they wasted to bone. And so Oglachny and a cohort came down from Connacht. The king of Connacht was being given a great splendour down in Munster and they asked me to provide this wine. Sure, I was terrified. I couldn't offer up a single thing. These beasts were a little pathetic looking. I got thrown out then, didn't I? Flat out on my backside. No job, no boasting, no ability to do anything other than plot. Wait, bide my time. I knew who it was that done that wrong to me, and I do the same wrong to him. See, many a day we'd go talking about the spells we could cast, all of us, the two a day. Well, we learned the magics up in Morius, Gorius, Faldius, and Phileas. Oh, we did indeed. And we'd often talk about the spells and the shape shifting and the ways we could change, often comparing notes as we would back then when we were friends. And so I know it as well, him that did it to me. He cast an evil sort of spell on my pig so he could look the better of us. Whatever got into his mind, well, I'd pay him back in the same kind. And so the following year I went up to Connacht and hid between shadow and rock of place and saw him fattening his pigs out there with great plenty all about the place and I whispered on a single strand of hair and blew it towards the pigs then as they were eating and something caught in their throat a spell for them to sicken the salvation of their saliva to sicken them so they could not devour any of the food. None of it would turn into muscle and fat. No, it gets sick, throat up, weak and weary, they be skin and bones. And I watched with glee in my heart. Glee to see rot, the foolish fool get kicked out. Glockney wasn't very happy when he wanted to welcome the King of Munster to a great feast, and sure enough, they had no fine fat pigs to serve him then. And so that's what it was for a while. But I had lost my position and he had lost his. I couldn't find him and he couldn't find me. We were keeping to ourselves, keeping to the wild places. I was practicing my own magic then, making sure I had everything I needed to face him. There'd be a chance I knew would have it. How and which and where and when exactly I didn't know, but when I found out, the 
And sure enough, Bo of Darug from Munster was gathering a great cohort to carry on up to Glockney and croak on there on the hill. And they will have a feast then. And he wanted to show a great boast of strength, and so he managed to gather together the finest of the warriors the Munster then had. And so... I looked to the sky, to the feet, to my crown. I stood solid and strong, and I changed the look of me. I changed the muscles on me. I cast a spell so my hand and knew which way to draw a sword better than any one man in Ireland knew at the time. I was stronger and faster than any one of them. I called them Rignu herself, the goddess of battle rage, to give me her strength, and I'd give her my anger. And there and then I knew I was the greatest warrior, and if there was a champion put up against me, I knew Rokt would be there and he'd want to do the same thing. He might be in a different guise, but I'd see him, I'd know. And so I waited, my heart beating with hate, filling my veins all the way through that feast as men laughed and talked and joked. How Connacht was full of stones, the monster men said. How Munster was full of fat men, breeding happily with waterfalls and singing and dancing, and no need for a work down in Munster, said the Connacht men. Well, it was all fairly civilised for a while until... Oglockney, he called both Derek to present a champion. It was my chance. I leapt up. Taking out my great sword, I told them I'd be the champion of Munster. Not a one of them knew who I was. But then I saw him across the hall, a stranger to my eyes, tall and dark with those eyes I recognised. It was him in a different shape. Rocked, I remembered him. We walked towards each other, stalking now. He'd placed a similar spell on himself as I had done on me. And when we clashed our swords together, the ringing went out throughout the hall. And we clashed our swords, we kicked, we gouged, we went at one another, not to best one another, but to kill. The hatred was hot in my heart, as it was beating so strongly, I forced myself to try and kill the man. As we knocked over tables, gouged into men, kicked over drinks and food and plates, knocked into monster men and connect men, and then suddenly surrounding us was a fight, a furious, feverish, hot fight, like fire blazing all around us. Both men from Connacht and Munster were fighting then, and I took glee to see all the surrounding people fighting amongst, but I had no eyes for them, only rocked. I must kill him, I thought I was doing well, but he was matching me in every way. I called to the Marignu to give me her strength, but he must have done the same, for every time I went for him he had something equal and match to match me. Our fighting carried us away from the fighting in the burning hall of Croagon. We fought for three days and three nights, till panting full of sweat we glared at one another. We threw down our swords, and twas I said it, I suggested it. In a different form this fight must be fought. He leered at me. Any form you want, he said. Any form, well, since I prayed the Mrignu, I called upon the first form we take to be battle crows. And the beating of my heart, and the hate hot in my veins, while well, I flung myself to the sky and changed to a crow. I swooped and cawed, and I saw him circling and clawing towards me as I clawed and pecked at him too, and the beating of my heart were like the beating of my own wings, and the hatred flowing through between the two of us now. 
we fought over Krogan and for a year, that long a time, oh, we kept going and shrieking to wake every babe in Ireland. And so we thought we might do the same thing down in both Derek's home since they both had kicked us out those ill-gotten kings. No respect for us. I'll show them respect. So we stayed in the air above both Derek's keep in Munster too, and we fought like that until a new form needed to be changed once more. He changed first. A wolf, Mac and Tear, son of the ground, well, fine. Sharp hooves I had then. Fur bristled as I leapt towards him with claws out and fangs sinking into his skin. He ripped around towards me, our tails swishing and circling and prowling, snarling and snapping. Mules full of hay. But still there wasn't a bit between us. The king of the forest, then, and be a stag, huge antlers going all over, clashing against his antlers, sharp hooves flying, as we kicked and trampled and belled and reared and crashed towards each other, but still not a bit between us. Something more agile and slick, full of hate, an evilness then, that shape we took with small phantoms then, shadows of the wall, darting and piercing and stabbing at one another. I was losing my mind into this hate, and I knew I was, but I stabbed at him in every way I could, but there was no killing a shadow, a shadow of evil, a shadow of hate, a shadow of my own reflection of the hate that I had for him. But still everything within me wanted him dead for the wrong he did to me. So I started it. It was his fault, and I must beat him. But still, even though in this agile shape we couldn't shake between the two of us a difference, Suddenly then we became something greater than I'd ever been before. The hate was taking over, my mind was being lost as scales now as big as shields became on my skin. A huge monster in the sea I became, glaring at him with teeth as big as swords. In the sea we swam, we churned the ocean into foam, reddening the waves as we tore at one another. For three days and three nights again we fought in this shape, but there was no beating him. He was equal to me in every way, and it was driving me mad. So tiny little eels we became then, that was it. Tiny little ears. We changed the last time. And we swam in a small pool, gnashing and writhing and twisting and cutting and tearing at one another, trying to rip each other apart for all the hate I had in him, but not a bit of it was able to pull him apart. Nor was he able to kill me. I had the Marigno on my side, and the beating of my heart still coursed through the hate I had for him in every bit of me. Oh, that hate so red hot, I can see it and feel it still now and then. The water and the hate. We lost each other in the flood of the river and the water, and the hate and the water. All I could see was the hate, the red hot hate for him. Anger coursing through me, but water pouring around me. I lost myself then. The time went away. All I knew was hate and water and cold. There was no part of my mind left. I'd left it behind as birds and wolves, shadow phantom, great sea monsters, stags, 
Tiny heels fighting, 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 but still water, cold, hate heart, hate him, those eyes, him, hate heart, hate, hated, hated, kill. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all social medias, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales or send us a message or get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist. Hashtag Candlelittle Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channel really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with your questions and requests. So please feel free to contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below because what we really want to do is get these stories out there. Share them with as many people as possible. So anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we really appreciate you listening. Gurmila Magar.